If a god can exist without a cause, why can't the universe exist without a cause? What is it about a god that allows it to exist on its own that doesn't allow a universe to exist on its own? Here's an apologist to try to explain. So here's how Christian philosophers normally respond to this. God's being uncaused follows from a more fundamental property that he has, namely perfection. God is a perfect being. And it's actually incoherent to ask what created a perfect being. And I'll give two quick reasons for this. First, anything that could create a perfect being would have to be more perfect than perfect, but that's impossible. Why would it have to be more perfect? Why can't a perfect being be created by an imperfect being? Imperfect things can improve themselves. They can get closer to perfection, so why couldn't they go all the way to perfection? Saying that something imperfect can't make something perfect is like saying that people who frequently make arithmetical mistakes can't build computers that never make arithmetical mistakes. The assertion that imperfect things can't make perfect things seems like a baseless assertion. Second reason, whatever can be created can also be destroyed, but anything that can be destroyed, in other words, anything that is fragile, isn't perfect. What convinces you that this is true? It seems far from obvious to me that anything which can be created can be destroyed. Even if the universe was created, I don't see how it's axiomatically the case that it can be destroyed. And what exactly is meant by perfection? To judge anything to be perfect is in most contexts a value judgment, making it largely subjective. Why, for example, would it necessarily be the case that something that can be destroyed is not perfect? Such an assertion presupposes that indestructibility is better in some sense than destructibility. This presupposition seems to me to be more of a subjective judgment than a logical necessity. In the case of the universe, however, there's nothing at all incoherent about asking what created it. Well, what does it mean to create something? It seems to me that the act of creation is the act of causing a change from a point in time at which something did not exist to a point in time in which that thing exists. In order for something to have been created, therefore, there had to be a point in time at which it did not exist. At what point in time did the universe not exist? Since time is a part of the universe, and I don't understand what it would even mean for time to exist without the rest of the universe, I don't think there was any point in time at which the universe did not exist. Theists argue that the universe had to have a cause because it began to exist, and everything which begins to exist has a cause. In a sense, the universe had a beginning, if it it is the case that time only stretches back 13.7 billion years. However, the Big Bang, rather than being a creation event, could simply be a temporal edge. It could be the case that the universe didn't come into existence at the Big Bang any more than a yardstick comes into existence at its first inch. Even if time is finite in the past, if there was no point in the 13.7 billion years that time has existed at which the universe did not exist, then there was no creation event for the universe, and thus no need of a creator. If there was no event in which the universe was created, then it isn't really coherent to say that the universe was created. And even if time could somehow exist without the rest of the universe, time itself could not have been created because there obviously could be no time at which time did not exist. Sometimes skeptics and atheists respond to this by saying that Christians are sort of specially pleading for the god of Christianity or their god in particular. They're just sort of making up properties about their favorite concept of god and then saying that it's uncreated. But why can't we do that for the universe? Why can't we just make up stuff about the universe and then call it uncaused? The problem that I see with the idea of perfection, as apologists use the term, is not that it's made up, but rather that it is subjective and therefore incapable of proving anything objectively. The term perfect being sounds essentially the same as greatest conceivable being. The ontological argument says that the greatest conceivable being must be conceived of as existing because existence is greater than non-existence. This, I think, is a subjective judgment rather than a logical necessity. Remember the claim is that it's actually incoherent to ask what created a perfect being. Now, on the other hand, is it incoherent to ask what created the universe? And the obvious answer is no. How is it coherent to ask what created something that was never created in the first place? I assume that you mean that creation means something other than causing a change in a state of affairs at one point in time to a state of affairs at another point in time, but what would that meaning be? If creation isn't some kind of change or event, what is it? Why? Well, here's one reason. If the universe began to exist, then it must have a cause. So if we have good evidence for a beginning of the universe, then the universe 
has to have a cause, and it's not incoherent to ask what created the universe. Only if there was a time at which it did not exist. There was never a time in the 13.7 billion years that time has existed at which the universe did not. We need an explanation for the billions of particles that make up our universe. Second reason is that everything in our experience that begins to exist has a cause. It might be the case that everything that at what time did not exist has a cause, but we have never experienced anything which has never not existed to need a cause. In fact, if something has never not existed, I don't even know what it would mean to say that it was caused. And that's about as good empirical evidence that you can get of anything. So for these two reasons, it's pretty safe to say that if the universe began to exist, then it has a cause. But why can't we just say that the universe has been here forever, that it's eternal? So putting aside whether or not like the evidence actually points that direction, let's just go ahead and assume that the universe is eternal. Does that make it literally incoherent to ask what created or what explains the universe? Not at all. Assuming you have one, take a look at your smartphone. I mean, you know that your phone hasn't existed forever, right? But just let's, let's pretend that it has. Doesn't it still seem obvious that this thing has some kind of explanation for why it exists? If to explain something, you mean to point to the cause of the event when a situation in which a thing did not exist changed to a situation in which it did, then asking for such an explanation is only coherent if such an event actually occurred. That doesn't seem to be the case with the universe. If that's not what you mean by explain, or by asking why something exists, then what do you mean by those questions? If that's not what these questions are intended to discover, then what are they intended to discover? Like why does an eternal smartphone exist instead of an eternal computer? Those are two different questions that have nothing to do with one another. If an eternal smartphone existed, the fact that an eternal computer does not exist doesn't imply that there must be a reason why an eternal smartphone does exist. If the eternal smartphone was never created, then I don't know what it means to ask why it was created the way it was. Why does it have the shape? of a smartphone. Here's another more like technical way of asking this question. The category smartphones has at least one member in it. But the question is why? Why does it have one member? Why isn't it not just empty? It seems perfectly possible that it could be empty, so why isn't it empty? Saying the phone has existed forever is just sort of saying like, well, the category isn't empty. But that doesn't explain why it's not empty. Neither does saying that a category contains something perfect, unless existing without a creator is inherent to the definition of perfection, in which case saying that a god exists without a creator because he's perfect is effectively to say that he exists without a creator because he is a thing that exists without a creator, or he has a quality that things which exist without creators have. It's circular. And so now ask yourself, are any of these questions that I'm asking like literally incoherent? Do they lead to some kind of contradiction? Yes. To everyone who helps me out on Patreon, you're a big help. Thanks so much.